All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Blue Ridge Silverhound. I'm your host, Sean, and today we are going to spend some time on this beautiful, happy Thanksgiving morning. I'm, you know, I, if you haven't heard it already, yeah, it's a holiday video, y'all. And uh, your boy, Blue, is here to deliver a little something. I haven't done a video all week, but I wanted to make sure that I, uh, you know, personally wish you guys a very happy Thanksgiving we are almost there to the end of the year, this tumultuous 2020. But anyways, we are going to get into a video where we discuss some uh, some crap, <laughs> essentially. Um, but don't let your eyes deceive you. What we have here is, uh, ironically, probably about seven $800 worth of stuff. Um, but it's also a trap because um, half of this stuff isn't even worth the metal that it's minted on. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, crazy. And now, obviously, I said there's quite a bit of value here as a group. However, you need to know exactly what you're looking for, right, guys? I mean, we, we all come across either that random collection that someone's selling or perhaps we're at a coin shop and you just see this, this bin full of, like, tokens and little wooden nickels and elongated pennies and you're trying to decide you know what, what do I look for in this stuff I am gonna tell you this right now the source source sources of these random tokens and metals can actually be very uh, I, what's the word I'm looking for um, I don't know they could be very valuable it could be a fruitful endeavor, especially if you're looking for stuff to, you know, buy on the cheap for like 50 cents to a dollar and then turn around and flip it. Well, but what are we looking for? All right. So what we have here, this is a part of coin collecting that's referred to as exonumia. Okay. So this falls well outside of like the traditional stuff, you know, like the each and every single denomination of U.S. coinage or currency or, you know, if you wanted to get deeper and wider with it, you know, it, it, it uh, supersedes commemoratives and uh, silver eagles and things like of that nature. This is all what I would consider to be like the random crap that exists in the hobby. Uh, but believe it or not, there was a lot of value. There was a lot of, how do I put it, just historical kind of aspects to this stuff than meets the eye. Okay, so stuff like this. You guys have seen these before. It looks neat. It's it's obviously a um, a uh, just a, a brave attempt at recreating a Morgan dollar. This one, of course, is a CC, but anybody that, that knows these things obviously knows exactly what it looks like. First of all, to come across a deep cameo proof like what this one is in a Morgan dollar series is, is just next to impossible. Okay. Um, but what we have here, plus it doesn't have the regular coin alignment where if you flip it over this way, the reverse image will be upright. Um, but as you can see, it does say copy. And uh, a lot of this stuff is bulk garbage. Uh, traditionally, these are going to be some sort of either like nickel or silver plated um, material, uh, probably copper. Okay, so if you come across these, keep in mind, they're not real silver. Okay, usually they'll say copy somewhere on the coin. This one just so happens to be on the reverse. And, um, you know, the some of them are silver, some of them are not. Okay, the ones that are not silver will pro well, or the ones that are silver will probably be stamped on the back. You'll either say silver plated, which isn't really silver because it's got a core of some sort of other metal, or it'll say 0.925 sterling or whatever. All right, so that's that. So, by the way, this is kind of gonna be kind of a long video, all right, just so we're aware and uh, knowledgeable of what we have out there. Now, casino tokens have been around for a long time. However, there are a lot of um, casinos that have gone gone away from using actual physical tokens in the machines or coins, okay? Uh, it's much more rare to find a slot machine that actually takes nickels or quarters or even the dollar coins, but these, believe it or not, have some sort of value. Um, traditionally, you wouldn't want to pay anything over face unless it's a really older, beautiful looking token, you know, something that looks like it was minted yesterday. Uh, but this one right here was um, for the Bonanza Saloon in Virginia City. Okay, it's kind of like one of those one off 
out of the way ghost town you know, kind of like you know the western honky tonk style towns um this one right here uh believe it or not i priced this one at two dollars uh about 10 years ago uh when i had bought a number of these right out of the slot machine at one of the casinos and that casino does not use tokens i believe for the like this anymore they've all converted to the paper ticket style of gaming all right so this one right here two bucks these are probably worth about five bucks um lots of these were produced so my kind of like rule of thumb when it comes to casino slot coins is that the bigger the casino the more well known the more of these tokens that exists okay it's only when you get kind of think outside the box and you look at the smaller casinos that probably closed down in the 70s or 80s finding those type of tokens is going to be a little bit harder so those would be worth more money okay and keep in mind condition still applies to the gaming tokens so i believe i have a few of these in here somewhere i don't know we'll, we'll come across them i'm sure um but anyways since we're on the uh subject of uh nevada or you know just gambling all in general uh this one right here was purchased i i bought this actually at the carson city mint uh some of you probably remember the video that i did you know a number of years ago uh, at the Carson City Mint uh, for their gold exhibit for all the coins that they've produced over the years, all the all the various states with the CC Mint mark. So the Carson City Mint is now a full-fledged museum. They've expanded on it. They did this a number of years ago. Now they're the Nevada State Museum is what they're uh, called. Uh, but they do produce these medallions off of the original minting press that they used to produce a lot of the, like the Carson City Morgans and all the other famous coins with the CC likeness uh, back in the day. All right. So they use that same press to produce these. And I bought this one for 15 bucks, but at least you guys know exactly what it is. And they do make a, a good deal of these um, and sell them right out of the Nevada State Museum. You could probably even pick these up online. Okay. So they're worth about what they're worth, you know, 10, 15, 20 bucks. Um, and I believe they only have like two designs. So that's what that looks like. Uh, let's see. So we got a number of just these oddball kind of like tokens right here. Um, these are centennials. Okay. A lot of the States had, had them produced, uh, from private parties back in the sixties and seventies. These things exist in such high quantity. There are tons of these out there. And, um, it, these are souvenirs, straight up. Uh, in today's terms, these are also referred to as so-called dollars. Um, the more modern so-called dollars aren't really worth a whole lot, if anything. Uh, generally, you you would see these things in like uh, uh, just bulk bins at a coin shop or a show for probably a dollar. Okay, and that's what they're worth. Okay, they they're just so plentiful. And um, you know, some of the designs are okay. This one I would say is just kind of marginal. Uh, the actual artwork is just looks like a five-year-old drew them. But anyways, that's what that one looks like. Okay. And then on the same token, uh, back probably 40, 50 years ago, there was also a lot of these uh, religious type of tokens as well. All right. A lot of these were produced in much the same fashion. This is a St. Francis token. Um, I believe they're all made of kind of some sort of like... Uh, 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 nickel plated kind of material. Um, so as far as, um, the actual intrinsic value, there is none, uh, essentially, but these here, uh, these are collectible to some, uh, surprisingly, there's a few of them that probably sell as high as 20, $25. And that's all going to take a little bit of research. Okay. Go online, go on eBay, see how much are people are asking for them and see how much people are actually selling them for, because how much someone's asking doesn't necessarily mean that's how much they are selling for on the secondary market all right so here's another one okay so this is another kind of like a nickel plated type of affair it's got kind of a proof field so if i sat there and rubbed the um the stuff off of there but by the way i don't care too much about these to to handle them any specific way uh but anyways uh, i kind of like the artwork on the back of this one uh, it's kind of like a piece metal of sorts, you know, uh, the, the olive branch being, uh, passed from one hand to the other. Plus if you've kind of read through this, you can see, um, you know, they're just different, um, 
different sayings for the word peace, you know, around around the globe. Uh, but again, something like this, you know, worth maybe a buck or two. Um, they, they're actually quite plentiful, but, you know, pretty neat to look at. Uh, the souvenir coins were either given away or sold at the events or various events across the country or the world uh, for, you know, probably five bucks. Okay, so here's another one here. Goodwill towards men. This one's heavily stained, though, but same thing right here. Uh, these things exist in high quantities. Uh, a lot of these were made, some would say as many as probably a few hundred thousand of these were produced. Um, that's information got received from a dealer that deals in exonumia. Uh, but anyways, yeah, you're looking at about maybe a buck or two for something like that. Not entirely worthless, but pretty close to it. Uh, let's do this one right here. This one I find pretty neat. So this is a uh, kind of like a recreation type of piece uh, for the uh, octagonal Panama Pacific $50 gold piece. Okay, now this one right here is a San Francisco, California. I don't know if this is like a Bay Bridge Centennial, something or another, but it is definitely a recreation of that octagonal piece. Uh, this one's kind of like brass or some sort of plated material. Uh, pretty neat, but again, these were made in such high quantities. And this is what I would say to be like a 70s or 1980s era type of um, uh, souvenir piece. And these are worth probably as high as five bucks. All right. Okay. So here's another one here. We'll get to the more juicier stuff as the video goes. Here's another uh, Creston, Iowa Centennial. As you can see, July 3rd, 1969. Uh, there is actually the front of it with the state of Iowa. Okay. Planning the future. So it's got 1869 to 1969. So this was made right at that time. Uh, again, these exist in pretty decent quantities in spite of the fact that it's a very small town compared to some of the other tokens that I've seen before. But, you know, again, to the right bidder, this is probably like a $5 token. All right, so here's another token right here, Daughter of the Stars. So this one, again, see, 1971. You guys see the theme with these souvenir tokens. This is Shenandoah, Iowa. Uh, now that I remember, I did pick up a, a large token lot, and a lot of it was from Iowa. So the collection is probably a Midwest collection, and this is one of those coins that was in there. Again, to the right bidder, you know, probably like five bucks, but you know, you could look online and probably see these, probably see maybe five or 10 listings of that one coin. Here's another one of the um, Shenandoahs. So that's a duplicate there. Uh, let's see, oh, let's take a look at this one here. It's a nice big brass deal. All right, so we got Sister City of Dublin, Ireland, Irish dollar. This one is really cool looking. All right, and uh, this right here is Emmitsburg, Iowa. Uh, so I would venture to guess that a lot of Irish people live in Emmitsburg, or it's a very Irish kind of like background community. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe some of you that live close by can, you know, kind of tell me uh, what the story is. But again, take a look at the date, 1972. Uh, again, to to a maybe a town specific collector, or perhaps. A someone who lives in that particular area in Iowa, uh, this probably would have a little bit more value to them. But I'm pretty sure that quite a few of these exist closer to that area. So again, that's probably a, like a five dollar token somewhere around there. But it's a nice bigger size. Take a look at this to uh, compare. So it's a little bit bigger. Um, you know, the, this one here on the right is probably closer to a half dollar, while this one right here is between a half dollar and an Ike. Okay, here's another token. Uh, good for 50 cents. Now we're getting into the interesting stuff. Uh, because this, even though this is a, um, a kind of like a commerce token or a trade token, uh, this one here is from Walnut, Iowa, 1971. Now the reason why this one's interesting is it can be used in trade for something at the Centennial headquarters. So this is for all intents and purposes, uh, referred to as a good for token or a trade token. Okay, some of these are extremely valuable, seeing as how this one has a full city and state, uh, Walnut, Iowa. It's got a date and it has a good for amount. Okay, this one right here is probably worth maybe in that five to ten dollar range. 
um, I would venture to guess, but still. Uh, good four tokens, keep that in mind. Those are worth money, and I have many more of those to um, share with you. So here's another one of these tokens. This one is George Washington, born February 22nd, 1732. So this is a George Washington kind of generic type of token right here. Uh, pretty neat. Uh, it's got a plain edge. Actually, it's it's got a little bit of a um, reeded edge on, on there. Uh, but some sort of like brass type of token. Uh, these are worth, again, you know, maybe a few bucks. Those, I can imagine, were made in such deep quantities that I probably normally wouldn't buy those. Uh, here's the 100th anniversary, and this one is of Lenox, Iowa. Uh, this is a centennial piece, much like the other one, which shows the actual state uh, designed right in the middle there. This is a 1972. Again, this is a, a period of time in which a lot of these uh, souvenir tokens were produced, kind of like how you go to like Disneyland and you see a lot of the, uh, the, the pressed, uh, elongated coin machines all over the place. Okay. Much the same fashion. Uh, these existed quite, quite frequently in, um, America during that time. All right. So we have another casino token here. This one is actually a poker chip, $1. Isle of Capri Casino, and I'm willing to bet that they were gone for a while now. Okay, so this is a very obsolete chip, $1. These are very collectible. There's actually a whole bunch of people that collect casino chips, especially the older ones. Uh, this one's probably worth about maybe five, 10 bucks, if I had to guess. Okay, so let's see. So back in the day, 1950s, maybe going back into the 40s, um, the uh, the big auto events across the country, this is the 54 Motorama, where, uh, you know, kind of like a car show today, where you go and you wanted to take a look at the newest uh, uh, kind of like offerings from all of the uh, manufacturers, or perhaps maybe there, there was a few um, demo vehicles of brand new cars, like if you went to a motor... Um, an auto show today, you might see that new Hummer EV sitting over there, uh, even though there was like, you know, a, a huge waiting list already for that vehicle. Pretty crazy. <laughs> but this one is sponsored by GM. 1954. Now, this is a really cool token. The condition's not the best. And I remember picking this one up for, I believe, like 50 cents or something like that. Uh, believe it or not, I put $2 here as the value. I've seen a few of these between 10 and 20 bucks. All right, so early auto show memorabilia, very popular. Uh, people do collect these, and um, you know anything with like a popular vehicle on the front, like a, a '55 Chevy, or you know maybe a '63 Vet split window. I actually saw one of those tokens. Those are all very, very desired coins. Okay, for what they are, it's the content on the coin that really makes the difference. All right, so let's go do these. All right, so this thing, made of nickel, made of wood, actually, not nickel. <laughs> so these are referred to as a wooden nickel. Uh, real simple, these are used in trade for items um, at, you know, specific, um, I, I guess, vendors. Uh, this one right here is actually more of a advertisement uh, chip than anything else. Uh, but as you can see, they use the Native American likeness of what you would normally see on a Buffalo nickel, just only facing the other way. Okay. And, uh, this one here is for Black Rock Fort, uh, 1976 Fort Hale. So this was probably more, more of a souvenir type wood nickel thing. Uh, wouldn't even call it a coin because it's made of wood. Here's another one right here. Carl's meeting place. Oh, I see what you did. Meeting. Okay. Yeah, that's not macabre at all. Uh, Carl's meeting place, place, and deli. All right. So I'm willing to bet they probably should have put a little dot there to separate the two. It's even still got a phone number there. And this is for free one pound of number one bacon with token. Ooh, mommy. I love it. Uh, who doesn't like bacon? Okay. Raise your hands because I better not see any. Uh, even has an address. And I don't know where this is at. So that's pretty cool. Pretty interesting. So if anybody knows where Carl's meeting place place is, let me know. Would love to know. 
Okay, so we got one of these here. This is a John Wayne American. I believe this is my dad's. So this one has a little bit more sentimental value. Um, God rest his soul. Love you, man. Uh, love you, dad. <laughs> and man. <laughs> uh, but anyways, he, he was such a fan of John Wayne and his movies. And I don't know where he got this from. I'm pretty sure he bought this maybe maybe online uh, somewhere or perhaps, you know, like uh, through a Sunday newspaper. You know, they, they throw in some pretty interesting souvenir tokens and coins and all that stuff. You guys remember that, right? Uh, something like this. I, you know, I'm sure these are like five, ten bucks. And, uh, but this isn't going anywhere. That thing's going to be buried with me one day. All right. This one will give you, actually, let's see. Car wash tokens and any sort of tokens like that, gaming tokens, uh, you know, those uh, aren't super incredibly, you know, valuable. This is Norwegian Cruise Lines. Uh, I know people like to uh, collect these um, by errors, you know, like a, so if it has like a die break or a cut or, you know, stuff like that, um, they, those could be pretty interesting. Uh, plus a lot of the, the first gen tokens for like a... Uh, um, uh, you know, whatever the pizza place is where a kid can be a kid and they can play. Yeah, it's, <laughs> my mind is not running in all cylinders on this Thanksgiving morning. Uh, but hey, Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, Chuck E. Cheese, the earliest um, versions of the tokens, like the first year out from a long, long time ago. Uh, those are worth some money. So we got that one there. Okay, this one will give you a chuckle. Only because of what it says. It says, Birdhouse, see Big Dick for Bird Milk. Hmm. 1969. This is in Bird Creek, Alaska, out of all places. Those weirdos up there. Uh, but take a look at the picture. So you got the bird taking a drop of a deuce on my coin. Good for one dropping of the at the birdhouse. Yeah, it's even got cereal stamped, and that's interesting. Uh, but anyways, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, that one is so interesting. I have not found one of those on eBay. Oh, of course, I haven't really looked recently. There's another poker chip. This one's for Edgewater in uh, Laughlin, Nevada. Uh, I think when I last time I went to Laughlin, which is a while ago, we're talking 1990s. I don't think Edgewater was there. I don't think so. I remember the uh, uh, the Riverboat uh, Casino. Um, was it Showboat? I don't know. Anyways, that's Edgewater. Uh, you know, it says five bucks. It's probably worth about that much. But do you guys see? Do you guys see the value I have in just these tokens I have here? There's probably maybe 50, 60, 70 bucks worth. Um, okay, so I wanted to throw this one in real quick. Now, it's a gold-plated uh, state quarter. Keep in mind, these were produced at the time as a way of stealing your money. Do I need to say anything else? These will come up on occasion and change and they look horrible after being subjected to general circulation wear. These look like garbage. They are garbage. They are worth 25 cents. Keep that in mind. Okay. So let's uh, take a look at a few of the elongated pennies. Uh, now these are basic generic ones. Uh, this one's Skagway, Alaska. Uh, I lived in Alaska for two years. So, that, you know, I ended up with a few of these. Um few of the collectible Alaska stuff. No, I did not get the bird milk token from Alaska. I actually bought that in a lot. Uh, it was just interesting as all get out. But anyways, um, the very specific town ones aren't worth a whole lot. They're probably worth 50 cents or less. I mean, you could probably get away with selling them for like five bucks on eBay, but it's going to take, it's going to take half your life before you sell, sell them. Okay. So just to forewarn you guys, uh, the ones that are worth a lot more money are the earlier ones. The ones that are actually pressed on like Indian head scents and Barber Dimes and all that great stuff. And, you know, those ones are either going to be like a uh, um, like a uh, Century of Progress, 1933 Chicago World's Fair or, or a Columbian Expo pressed elongated coin. Those are worth hundreds of dollars. OK, so if you see those. Make sure you pull them out. Anything with like a state fair from the early America, those are extremely valuable. Uh, here's a Planet Snoopy, Great America. Uh, yeah, it's worth about a nickel. 
The ones where you could actually still see the design of the coin, where you can actually see the obverse and the full date, I think those are just really interesting. And here's another one right here. This one's a Disneyland Tigger. And you can't see any, um, any of the devices from the host coin. All right, so I, I, so here's the more interesting, very valuable stuff. Okay, um, remember how I talk about trade tokens being a thing? <clears throat> Excuse me. So trade tokens, where you have an actual discernible, good for value. Okay, uh, usually these are not going to have any dates, but a lot of the towns and businesses on the tokens can be, um, can be. Uh, attributed and uh, the information can be found out online. There's actually a really cool token website that attributes and um, kind of like gives you a date era range of when these were being used and a lot of them from like the 1900 to 1930. Those are your most valuable. Okay, and then there are some that are, you know, in the 1800s as well. But these ones right here, these good for trade tokens are uh, probably... A uh, sector of numismatics or exonumia, rather, uh, that people are slowly starting to find out about. Okay, so why I can tell you right now is that there are a ton of these in just generic token bins. Okay, and not not everybody knows about them, and some of them look like brand spanking new. All right, there are some that have never been used. All right, so the first one we have here is from Chelan, Washington. It's a gardens. Good for 25 cents. Okay, it's even got the, it's important to have the town name, if anything. All right, and then the business, and then the actual value. Okay, that's what's going to make these things incredibly valuable. Guess what? This token that you see here with the weird scalloped shape is worth about 40 to 50 bucks. Who would have thought, right? That's something like that, that, you know, and a lot of these tokens I have found in these junk bins. Okay, and I've done the actual legwork of researching them and seeing how much they're worth. Um, absolutely. I mean, these things right here, this is where a lot of the value comes with searching these junk bins. Good for tokens. Um, here, let's see, what do we got here? We have Ellensburg Washington Club Cigar. Now, I can tell you this right now. This is a more common good for token, um, even though it's Ellensburg. It's a small community in central Washington. Uh, my wife's dad lives close, close by actually. This one's good for 10 cents in trade and it's a cigar club. Um, club cigar is the name of the store. Uh, but this one's really cool. Now, unfortunately it's only worth about 20 bucks. <laughs> you know, let's say you found something like this for 50 cents or a quarter. Okay. Which is what normally a lot of these coin dealers will sell the bulk stuff for. Um, just imagine finding maybe 10 of these tokens in their token bin. Uh, I mean, we're talking huge potential. You guys want to make some quick money? Go to a coin shop or a show and search through their garbage crap uh, token bins. You will not you will not believe the amount of stuff. Now, here's one that I attributed. Uh, this is uh, Selbyville, Delaware, uh, J.G. Townsend. Not J.G. Wentworth, okay? We don't need any structured settlement in this video. Uh, J.G. Townsend, okay? Good for 10 cents. So you have a discernible um, uh, good for amount. This one looks like it's been cleaned at some point or buried. Uh, but this is a uh, $20 token, okay? And uh, the reason why it's attributable to the, um, to the city that it belongs is because of the name. All right, so again, you this is a very small looking token. It's probably a size of a dime or smaller, so it's very small. And um, this is, I believe, I this is a dime, two by two. So you can see it's a lot smaller than a dime. Not too, terribly. I, I'm making it sound like it's way smaller, but it's not. Um, you know, fingernail size. Yep, it's worth about twenty bucks. Here's another Selbyville. Uh, this is another JG Townsend. This is a little bit bigger. So when the denominations go up, and this one doesn't have it stamped on the back, but I would venture to guess this is probably good for like maybe a quarter or 10 cents or five cents. Um, the, these are early America. Okay, you would go into a, uh, uh, you know, a general store. You would trade this for credit toward your purchase. 
um, you know, and that's that. That's how they're, uh, you know, valued. Uh, this is another $20 token. All right, so this is a very common San Francisco, California. Uh, this is Moy's Clinker. It's a telephone token. So, you know, back in the 19 teens, uh, you would use these tokens to make a phone call, um, you know, if you didn't have actual physical money to use. Uh, so you could you can acquire some of these tokens. These are packed with information, uh, but this one right here is an incredibly common token. Uh, it's probably worth about five bucks. And this one is uh, pretty well worn. It's got some gunk on there. But can you imagine picking that up for about 50 cents? Uh, you would have done okay. All right. So we got Laurel, Delaware, Phillips Packing Plant. Um, they they pack, pack, packed probably seafood. The seafood was big business in Delaware. Uh, during early America or early 1900s. I can't really say early America. Uh, Phillips packing. So they did a lot of like scallops, oysters, that sort of thing. Uh, they packed those up at their plant. Uh, this one right here is probably good for a can of oysters. You know, something like that. Oh, that one's probably worth about 20 bucks. Here's a uh, Cambridge, Maryland. Okay, so we got Phillips Packing. Uh, this one is the same company as the other one. Uh, they were pretty, pretty big. It's almost like um, they they were as big as Hunts, you know, <laughs> back in the day, when it came to packing meat and uh, seafood. Uh, this one right here is pretty cool, even as the the full city and state, Cambridge. And it's uh, almost the uh, eastern shore of Maryland lived there for a number of years. That's why I was so partial to uh, anything the mid-Atlantic range of the U.S. because, uh, you know, Maryland, Delaware, Virginia, I was there for quite a while. Went to school there and all that great stuff. So there you go. We got that one there. Uh, this one's good for 25 cents in trade. Oh, by the way, the uh, Cambridge is worth about 30 bucks. Maybe 20 because that's a Phillips packing. They're, again, they're quite common. This one's cool. This is a HM Berg company or Burge. Uh, this is an Appomattox, Virginia uh, dealer in general merchandise. So if you wanted, you know, just anything like uh, from uh, cigarettes, cigars, all the way up to canned goods and breads and all that stuff, milk, um, you could use this in trade. All right, this is worth about thirty bucks. So it's a uh, good for twenty five cents. I, I think I have some of the other denominations in here as well uh here we are this is a bigger one this is the size of a half dollar so it's still the same place hm burge berg and they, they also made these in other um different types of metals this one's more of a tin i've seen them on copper or bronze uh i haven't seen one in silver uh, that'd be cool not many of them did over strike on silver instead they would even use the regular coins uh to, to strike these on so you could see you know like old design elements of maybe like a barber dime or something that's cool this one's good for 50 cents so normally the higher the good for amount the bigger the token would get um you know just like in today's coinage unless it's a dime of course and it shrinks down so we got that one there I'm pretty sure I do. I have one more Appomattox. No, that might be it. All right, so here's one of my most recent buys. This is good for a nickel in trade. Uh, this is a Fort Lewis uh, mess token. Okay, so this was used, I guess, in the army. Okay, and these are quite common. There's a lot of these out there. The ones that are good for a mess hall, um, because these would, I guess, these would be uh, handed to you when you enlist. And you go through like boot camp and all that stuff. They would give you a whole mess of these things, and you would you would trade it for food. All right, a plate of food. Um, but anyways, uh, these are worth probably at the most five bucks. There are some mess tokens from prisons that are absolutely valuable. They're worth like fifty, a hundred, two hundred dollars. Um, keep an eye out for those, uh, especially in nicer conditions. They are very desirable. And this one's North Carolina, by the way. We're almost done, guys. All right, this one's cool, if anything, for the actual shape of the thing. Okay, this sucker right here is Old Dominion Crab in Newport News, Virginia. Okay, it says NNVA. All right, so uh, it's good for one pound 
And I believe this is for seafood. Yeah, Old Dominion crab. Good for one pound of the finest uh, blue crabs you could ask for. Or maybe soft shell, if that's your preference. Some people like the good old soft shell. Some people like the good old Maryland blue crab. All right, but there you go. That one's cool. Uh, this one's worth about 60, 70 bucks. Yeah, it's very, very nice. I like that one. Sea View, Virginia, JT Outen or Uten. Uh, this one and Brothers. We can't forget about the Brothers, as weird as they are. Good for 10 cents in merch. All right, so there you go. That one's worth about 25 bucks. And it's in pretty nice shape. Looks like it's never been used. It's worth about $25, not 25 cents, but it's good for 10. Here is Chesapeake, Virginia, J.W. Moore. Okay, this was back in the day when actual singular individuals owned their companies and they called it by their name, their namesake, as opposed to calling it, you know, like 7-Eleven or whatever. Uh, so I always found that interesting. And all these guys would specialize in something very specific. Uh, this one right here is good for one cent in trade, okay, which is probably maybe half a loaf of bread. On a good day. It's not transferable. So sorry guys. You cannot give this to your brother. And uh, have him walk up to the JW, JW Moore store. <laughs> Alright. So the, here's another common one. You see these all the time in token bins. Uh, International Flight Service. San Francisco, California. Uh, I would venture to guess these are used on a plane. So it's good for a quarter in trade. And these are worth about maybe two or three bucks. This was cool because it's got a nice die punch in the middle there. Port Townsend, Washington, Clinger's Bakery. Now, this one is actually really, really cool. It's very rare. Uh, the token in itself is worth about 100 bucks. Good for $0.05 cents in trade. Um, yeah, anything Port Townsend is uh, not particularly common. All right, so this one right here. I actually found this one, and I knew exactly what it was when I, when I saw it in a token bin at a dealer in the Bay Area. And um, I just had to have it. And uh, guess what? You know, two bucks later, I was an owner of that thing. Uh, okay, so we got this one here. It's got a nice letter A dyed, die cut or stamped into the middle of the thing or punched out. Alaska Card Room in Portland, Oregon. All right, fourth and Burnside with the address on there. It's uh, good for a nickel in trade. So I don't know what I don't know if it's a poker room or if it's something completely different that I'm not aware of. Uh, but anyways, there you go. Uh, this one's worth about twenty bucks. Yeah, all the tokens are worth twenty bucks. It's twenty dollar token day. Here's Littell, Washington, Littell Mercantile. Okay, we got a full uh, city and state on there along with business name. Good for a nickel in trade. Yeah, you've seen quite a, you've seen quite a few of this stuff I had to show you to the point where you guys are should be automatic. You walk into, into a coin shop and they're like, I know what that is. Just don't say anything to the dealer. Like, oh, did you know it's a $30 token? Gonna, they're actually going to pull it out and charge you 30 bucks for it. Good job. Uh, but anyways, yeah, this is worth about 15, 20 bucks right there. This one is incredibly cool. I've had this one for quite a while. So this is a, a uh, Bernard and Friedman Tanners. Okay, they dealt in a lot of uh, uh, not only um, leather material, but all, they also did a lot of stuff for horses and shoes. And this is actually a shoe tag token. So you see it's got a hole at the top, which is normal. And this was affixed to a piece of leather merchandise that they were selling. This is Boston, Massachusetts. Check that out. It's in really good shape, too. Best Shoe Leathers Titan Calf. So it's an advertisement token for something that they were selling. And they had this on every single piece of goods and service that they, they, they were offering. All right. Uh, this one looks brand new, like it was never used. But this one is worth question mark because I haven't found another one like it uh to me it's priceless because it's been in my collection for 15 years uh, I cherried this one out of a uh, box of tokens bought it for a buck you know you guys see the the uh you know the theme here 
Yes. Okay, so we left the last few things as being the most interesting in the bunch. We have a 1939 Golden Gate International Expo. So again, all those state fairs and expos are extremely desirable. This one right here has got a really cool early kind of like Art Deco America design. Uh, it's got big old data on there. Uh, this one is actually worn as a necklace or possibly something else. Uh, maybe a cufflink or, you know, whatever the case may be. But it was definitely a, a piece of souvenir that was offered at this expo. Okay, these are worth somewhere in a neighborhood of 40 to $60. I haven't seen one quite like this in a long time on eBay. And that's how tough they are. If you have something that's relatively unique and it's seldom offered, they're worth more to people, okay? Because there's always going to be that audience that comes up like out of nowhere and buys these things up. So this right here is just an example of what could be fit on those tokens with the whole. There you go, guys. Century of Progress, baby. 1934 Chicago World's Fair. That's what that is. It's blank on the back. But this one was uh, was worn quite a bit. But it's charming. It's all original. Okay, and something like this is worth... You know, worth in that $50 range. It's even got, you know, the original chain and, you know, the that thing right there. Uh, I'm sure you put that in a buttonhole and it just hangs off of your, your jacket. You know, we're talking 1934. People were still wearing, you know, sport blazers in the middle of the freaking summertime. So, that's what that one is. So, if you see something like that, definitely hold on to it. And then finally, my pride and joy that I picked up just about a week ago. This is an encasement. So this whole time talking about tokens and whatnot, we didn't talk about encased coins. Now, this is not your typical encased coin because an encased coin is usually round with a penny in the middle. And it says, you know, good luck. If you carry me everywhere, you're going to have good luck for 40 years and 40 nights or whatever. Uh, but this one right here is actually a bear encasement. Okay, it says bear. Bear us in mind on the front, and it's got that really pretty Indian head scent, which, by the way, the Indian head scent would kind of give you a, an idea of the actual date of the encasement. So we're talking like early, early 1900s here, ladies and gentlemen. This one does not have an estimate mark, all right? Do not try to take the coin out because the coin is damaged already, being that it's been pressed into the encasement. Uh, so right here, this is a teddy bear bread, Cobb's Bakery, bakeries in Philadelphia. How cool is that? All right. So this is not only an encasement, but it's also a good for token. All right. Or an advertisement card. Um, this one right here is worth about 200 bucks as it is. Now I paid a little bit less for it. But it was in a standard auction format, you know, and I, I actually rounded up a little bit to where we're at right now. Uh, yeah. So the encasements where you have like an odd, odd shape encasement or, you know, maybe a, a character or, you know, something very specific. Uh, those are always worth the most, okay? Especially the ones that are advertisement driven and less driven on the actual, you know, good luck token aspect of it. Those are always going to be worth more money. So keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, if you're searching through that stuff. But that's, uh, you know, that's it. That's the last one I wanted to talk about. If you guys have these in your collections currently, you just don't know what you have. Now you do. Congratulations. You might actually make a buck or two off of them or keep them. I mean, a lot of them are neat. They have a lot of great artwork, even the kind of like newer stuff. In spite of what you may think, you know, uh, because they have a very limited audience in general, they, they do appeal to you. And they probably appeal to a few other people as well. But that's going to go ahead and do it on this one. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. We did a little kind of like uh, uh, Thanksgiving video on uh, tokens and exonumia. Um, yeah, you guys better start treasure hunting those uh, random lots of tokens and stuff. You know, they may look boring to you, but yeah, you could easily pick through and make a few hundred dollars. Every time I look into a token bin, I always find stuff that I could flip. And I, I make a killing off those bins. Uh, they're worth it. It's a lot of fun. You might actually find something that you can put in your personal collection. That's going to go ahead and do it for this one. You guys enjoy Turkey Day today. Um, Coinaholics, we're discovering together. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Hit that good old bell. All right, guys. Long video is done. You guys take care. Get back to your families. What are you guys doing watching YouTube anyways?